Tune in to your boy. You can hear me on a myriad of uh, platforms. Remember, this is a podcast. What a podcast is, is on online entertainment. And that is entertainment that you can access anytime you like. You can stay here on Spreaker.com by using the link that you use to get in contact with the show. You can go to YouTube, Built for This Network. Built for This Network on YouTube. You'll see our logo. You can go to Apple Podcasts, same thing. Spotify. You can go to iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Caster, Deezer, Podcast app in the Himalaya. I need you guys to comment, subscribe. I mean, excuse, excuse me, subscribe, comment. Tell me how you like the show. If you do, don't, or how, what else you would like to talk about. It's easy. You know what I'm doing next. It was taught to me that if you are publicly speaking, you should send out respect to your elders that are fast on. Therefore, I do that every week. Shout out to the people in my family who are related to the Whitmore, Pollard, Turner, Battle, Cotton, Arthur, Bailey, Chris, Lansdowne, Liggins, Duncan, and you already know me and my pops and my brothers and sisters. We are the Williams clan. We in the building. Thank you for tuning in. Man, it's been a rough week. Not a whole lot on TV. Not a whole lot, a lot of new sports to talk about. We got some good news, some bad news, and some creative thinking. This week, what I'm going to do, instead of doing like ESPN and telling you the same story 10,000 times, Bill Belichick said this about Tom Brady. Tom Brady said this about Bill Belichick. The Patriots are not going to be good this year. The Patriots are not going to be good next year. What are they going to do and all this and all that? We're not doing that here. What I'm going to do is talk about actual sports that are happening, things that could happen, things that may happen, and I'm going to give you a flash from the past. Yesterday was the anniversary of the Mamba Out game. Big ups to, to the late, great Kobe Bryant. I'm talking about that for a second. And since that would have been the beginning, today would be the beginning of the playoffs, I'm going to give you what I perceive as the greatest playoff moments in NBA history. I didn't tell you that they were. I just said mine. You have a different point of view. You are welcome to participate in the show and say, hey, this is the way I see it. I'll be more than glad to listen. I may even open up. You know what? I am going to open up the phone lines and we'll see what happens. We can, I'm open to debate. And if you up for the debate, I'm open. I'm listening. I'm like Frazier Crane, I'm listening. So, I'm going to start off with Joe on a somber note. And that somber note is in the sports world, there have been two recent deaths. The first one, a young man at the age, at the young age, 36 years old, former quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, former quarterback for the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Who by the name of Tavares Jackson, he lost his life in a car accident. This is a sad situation. A young man only lived to be 36 years old. 36 is not enough years to enjoy anything in regards to life. Now, if you had one job for 36 years, that's different than you're talking about this dude's entire life lasted 36 years. It's a sad commentary. Rest in peace to Brian Jackson. And prayers go out to the Jackson family. Most of us are stranded in the house right now. We're stuck in the house. Some of us are lost our places. Floyd will do this illness called COVID-19. Nicknamed the coronavirus due to the way it crowns up on your microscope. The coronavirus has taken thousands of lives worldwide. Millions of people are infected by it. And one person in particular that most of us in the sports world know goes by the name of Carl Anthony Towns. He announced that his mom was in a uh, medically induced coma a few weeks ago. Miss Towns, Miss Cruz Towns, Carl Anthony's mom has passed away. Prayers go out to the Towns family. Prayers go out to the tight NBA family. What I understand is one of the complete angel. Uh, you saw the pouring out of love by players league wide. And this, you know, John Calipari, Johnson Phillips, and other players and NBA execs who had contact with this woman were sharing how much they loved her. I'm sure this young, young town is shattered by this. I lost my mom almost 10 years ago. September be 10 years. I don't know what I would do, would have done at age 22, 23 years old if my mom would have died. So, young brother Towns, prayers of peace and blessings go out to you. 
It's a sad commentary. I hope you'll be all right. I'm sure you'll be all right, brother. I'm going to tell you what my mother told me. You'll never get over the fact that your mom passed away. I still have not had over my mom passing. She passed in 1977. Every day you'll be able to deal with it a little bit. So young brother Towns, hopefully this gets to you. And you can grab hold to that line of thinking and peace and blessings to you. With the town family, I'm sure she will be missed. Wrap your arms around each other and make sure you that support each other through this difficult time. Sad situation. Now, with that being said, on a better note, on a more entertaining, engaging, and light note, you have the NBA. NFL, MLB, everything has been shut down. Now you have people signing contracts and things of that nature, but all the action has been put on the back burner. The reason I'm bringing this up is the NBA and the young people, the people who are in the NBA, and some people who are no longer in the NBA, the NBA vets, people in the Hall of Fame, they got together via uh, uh, technology and play a series, they're going to play a series of games of horse. I thought it was a joke at first. I thought, man, I get the hell out of it. After checking it out, it seemed to be wildly engaged. You had Paul Pierce looking like an old man. You had the homie Chauncey Billups come from deep behind and do what he does. Mr. Big Shot did his Mr. Big Shot thing. And he took off. It was it was very engaging. It was very fun to watch. It was good to see NBA players doing their thing, even though they were not playing an actual game. They were entertaining us. I appreciate the fact that they took the time out of their lives and gave a damn about what we were doing. And hey, because I was one of the people sitting around going, man, tell those NBA players to take care of their families, man. Tell them to do what the hell they're supposed to do with their families. But because they've been socially conditioned to take care of us, and I appreciate every moment of it, I appreciate every second of it. They took time out of their day to engage with us and have a good time. If you get a chance to watch the remainder of the horse competition, please do. It was engaging. I had a lot of fun watching it. Hopefully, if you can catch it on the replays, I'm sure they're going to replay it on NBA TV. They're doing this in their backyards. They're doing it via technology, via their cell phones and things of that nature. I don't know what it's the IG or what have you. It was awesome. I really appreciate the Chauncey Village Trey Young. Demetri Catchins, uh, Paul Pierce, right here in the Chicagoland area, Zach Levine winning for the Bulls, rather. Zach Levine and others doing their thing because it was it was appreciated. A lot of people stuck in the house. A lot of people don't have anything to do. That's why you listen to me in the bench right now. Because you probably don't have anything else better to do. But it's Tuesday, that's why you listen to me. It's a good show. But I really appreciate them. Thank you for taking time out your day. It was engaging. It was a whole lot of fun. Big up. Here. Speaking of being shut down, last week you were supposed to get UFC. I'm not a big MMA uh, fan. A lot of people are. Just because I don't like it does not mean other people do not enjoy it. Dana White got shut down by ESPN. He doesn't want to frame it in that, uh, uh, in that way. Allegedly, this dude went out and purchased the island. Who the hell did he pay? But that's a whole other conversation for another situation. He went out and purchased the island, so People could be engaged in MMA, Miss Martial Arts, UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship. It was canceled. ESPN and him partnered a few years ago in order to continue to blow up this sport. They are in the box. They are in the boxing game. They are in the MMA game. And people were saying, "How can you do this with this pandemic going on?" And we're looking at a situation where people's lives are in danger. Look. People do anything for money, as you see. If you have the opportunity to earn money, people stand in line to get it and do it. Therefore, that's why Dana White has been successful all these years. That's why we are looking at a situation to where Dana White can do what the hell he wants to do. But he has been stepped in, thankfully, and postponed this event. Look, this, I don't think people are taking this thing as serious as they should. It is, I don't understand why. The people at ESPN don't just put up information and do a couple things like I'm doing tonight. Talk about sports. Talk about the old sports. Engage people. 
educate people, put them in a situation to where they will learn more about sports versus just exclusively watch sports. So when you learn more, you're more engaged. And when you're more engaged, you put yourself in a situation where you get more viewership if you ask me. The more you know about something, the more you want to learn about it. And then when they come back full fledged, you'll be you'll have the French fans become big fans. You have the fans that don't give a damn become French fans and you'll make more money. That's just the way I personally see it. Obviously they don't see it that way because they keep having people say the exact same thing over and over. Even my main man Shannon and that goofball Bayless, they all they on the other network talking about if Michael Jordan played LeBron James in the game, of course. Look, if you like Michael Jordan, cool. If you like LeBron, cool. But nobody's wrong with the situation. So please, please, I beg of everybody who continues to have a simple minded ass conversation. Let's stop. I'm sick of hearing about it. I'm sick of talking about it. Let's move on. Big ups to Bill Walk. With that being said, big ups to Bill Walk. This is another simple minded conversation, but I don't mind engaging in it. Simply because. I agree with Bill Walton on this in this instance. I mean, there's no other reason when you want to agree with somebody. You will go along with whatever they say when you agree with them more than likely. But ESPN, again, no creativity, no imagination. They put out this poll saying, who would be the greatest college basketball player ever? And first and foremost, it was kind of asinine, not because you shouldn't ask people their opinion, it's asinine because the people who are on social media, more than likely didn't even see most of the people that were in this contest. What you could have done ESPN, as I stated in the last two shows, you could have got your would-be basketball experts. You could have got all those dudes who, the Jason Williams, the Jay Villas of the world, and those guys, and all those writers that you employed. I think you could have employed a couple other writers to come to the studio do be a satellite like you've been doing and have an open-air discussion about it. You could have put it on Twitter. You could have had the guys in the studio and had other writers vote on it. And then coaches and other people. You could have made this an event. You could have dragged it on for a couple of weeks like you did. But you could have made more money because people would have been tuned in. It would have been an NCAA tournament style competition. You could have literally broke this down bracket by bracket and made money off of it. But no, you put it out there for free. And then it, you engage people who didn't see 95% of people. And the reason I'm upset and other people are upset with it because, again, it made no sense. Look, Michael Jordan is arguably the greatest basketball player we've ever seen and ever will see. You know, you can always go back to the same lame argument. Mike, six for six in the NBA Finals, and he got six Finals MVP. And look at all, we got it, we heard it. You said that 10,000 times, you said that 10 billion times. But when it comes to college basketball, sorry folks. As great as Michael Jordan is and was in college, as great as he was in college, Michael Jordan was never the face of any franchise in the history of NCAA time. Well, and, and you know what? He was never the face of a team that made it to the finals. How about that? Michael Jordan's last appearance in college basketball, he was choking at the free throw line, and Dan Dockett shook him up. Yeah, yeah that Dan Dockett, that's on ESPN calling games right now. He shook him. He, he kind of shut Mike down. And is Dan Dockett on Michael Jordan's level? Not even close. But at the end of the day, Dan Dockett shut Mike down. And people who would never admit that publicly, you know, all these Michael Jordan lovers, they'll never admit it. But Dan Dockett just did it. And that doesn't, you know, because you had one bad game, does not take away from your greatness. Larry Johnson was choking his last game. Because Larry Johnson was a great ball player. But the difference is, in order to be the greatest at something, and, and according to you guys' standards, which y'all told me, rings mean everything. Rings mean everything, right? Without rain, it don't mean a thing if you ain't got the rain. That's what y'all been telling me since I've been doing this. Y'all been telling me in barbershops for decades now. It's the ring, it's the ring, it's the ring. Michael Jordan has never led a team to an NCAA tournament. Michael Jordan has been on a championship ring. The same reason you guys tell me that Scotty Pippen isn't one of the greatest players ever. It's the reason Michael Jordan can't be one of the uh, greatest college basketball players ever. Because... In 1981, or what's 80, 81, 82? Yeah, 80, 82, 83, actually. And, eight, and when Michael Jordan was a freshman in college, when he hit that baseline shot for the, that eventually won the game, he was not the star of the show. He was the Scotty Pippen of that team. James Worthy was the most outstanding player that year. 
James Worthy was the player of the year that year. James Worthy was the first player to take the draft that year. James Worthy was the man. 